Hello everyone, my name is Ali and I am a grad student at McGill University and today we're going to talk about complexity theory and how it's applicable to second language acquisition. So first, what is complexity theory? Complexity theory adopts the idea of the existence of complex systems. Complex systems exist on our planet and we see them every day. We see them within plants, we see them within animals, and also they can be uh, human constructions. The main components of complex systems are nonlinearity, dynamism, interactions, adaptation, uncertainty, and self-organization. The example of the bird flock depicts a vivid representation of a complex system because when they fly together, the birds act like a coherent unit. They are dynamic and self-organized because they don't bump into each other. They adapt to the weather conditions, the, the, the air speed, and fly in a nonlinear direction and interact among each other as a whole unit. So how this theory related to uh, second language acquisition? It all started with researcher and professor Diane Larson Freeman, who, who said that she was trying to address the learner's inert knowledge problem. In other words, she was trying to understand why learners don't make any use of the language they learn in the classroom outside in the real world. The reason is because of the linear way of learning. Learners use the language features in a class and forget them in the second because they hardly revisit them in the same intensity in subsequent lessons. So she thought of addressing the problem by thinking of language in a more dynamic fashion. From here it came the idea of linking language learning to complex systems that are indeed dynamic. So according to complexity theorists, learning occurs from its own conditions as the learners interact with their environment. Learning does not happen in a linear or predictable fashion. As they interact and when they revisit the language more than one time, learners may notice gaps in their knowledge or may experience uh, the realization they need to rethink what they thought they knew about certain aspects of the language. So they adapt and eventually change. If we take a look uh, in, on the picture, the circle in red is an example of one learner's possible interactions during a lesson. The learner might interact with themselves, with another uh, learner or learners, they might interact with the teacher, with the resources such as books, internet, dictionaries, encyclopedias, and also with imagined people, imagined self, imagined thoughts or ideas. Through all these experiences, learning takes place and language emerges. This was an example of one learner's interaction. So how does the whole interactions look like? maybe something like this. So, if according to complexity theory, learning is unpredictable and occurs naturally following its own path, does it mean teachers have no role? Of course not. A teacher's role is to promote the features that are being learned and give students a chance to practice them in the classroom. Teachers can facilitate learning by preparing the environment of learning through the materials, activities, and practices in the classroom. Complexity theorists reject the notion of input and prefer the notion of affordance. Anything in the class environment can be an affordance because it affords to the learner the opportunity to use it and learn from it. An affordance for a learner can be another affordance to another learner. For example, in a story where the main character fights a volcano eruption to save the village, 
the volcano itself can be the setting for the story for one learner, but also an affordance for another learner. Let's say this learner is interested about volcanoes. So the volcano is an affordance for them. They might ask about volcanoes reasons, about lava, about granite rocks. So the teacher should see this as an opportunity to teach students about their uh, interests and answer their questions. Applying complexity theory in the classroom can be really enjoyable for both teacher and learners. There's a sense of freedom with it. When teachers understand that development is non-ending, they will be more away from traditional practices and assessments that usually compare learners to native speakers and focus more on the personal development of their learners, what they like, what they know, and what they could achieve. Thank you very much for watching this. Have a nice day.